Back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Sarah Basile, Director of Advocacy for In Defense of Christians. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Annie. Thank you for having me on the show this morning. Thanks for joining us again. You know, just a day or two after we spoke last week about the Christian genocide that continues to take place in Nigeria, the U.S. State Department released its list of countries of particular concern when it comes to religious freedom. And after just one year on the list, Nigeria has been removed. What was your reaction to that news? Sure. So if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to start just by talking about what constitutes a country of particular concern and what it means. Sure. So a country designated as a particular uh, of particular concern, it's a designation by the Secretary of State um, for a nation that's engaged in severe violations of religious freedom under the uh, International Religious Freedom Act of 1998. So it's uh, severe violations such as systematic and ongoing violations of religious freedom. So historically, places like um, Nigeria just joined, but North Korea, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Vietnam are some of the ones that have been on that list for many years. So... Nigeria, when it joined last year, it was because of its systematic oppression and genocide of Christians in Nigeria, which is um, it was a very important first step in getting uh, the help needed to these communities. So when it was uh, designated, um, big win for the community. When it was taken off, it's very concerning. Um, first and foremost, it gives the uh, Buhari government, which is the president of Nigeria, validation for its uh, ongoing crimes. And then second, it doesn't hold those accountable um, for these crimes, and it's very concerning altogether. Very concerning altogether. I mean, the Commission on International Religious Freedom released a statement in the wake of this news saying they are shocked and appalled by this. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, I mean, has the State Department or Secretary Blinken or anyone there given any indication as to why Nigeria was removed against the recommendation of the commission? Yes. So it's important to remember that the commission makes recommendations. The State Department does not have to follow. However, uh, historically speaking, of course, they've done so um, on a regular basis. And so it was very shocking, especially given the violence. What um, what we do know is that they cited the fact that it's oppression towards every community in Nigeria, which is, you know, simply false because the systematic oppression of Christian comes from two or three particular groups, whereas it's, uh, it's a different breed of oppression and violence towards the non-Christian uh, communities in Nigeria. And so that was, you know, their reasoning, you know, it, it's pretty much violence everywhere in Nigeria is what they're citing. But we're really concerned um, by the fact that the designation as a non-CPC country means that there's not going to be any uh, economic sanctions towards the country, and we're basically giving them humanitarian aid with um, with no restriction on that. That's one of the things that happens when a country is designated as a CPC. There's some kind of um, economic sanction because when a country is designated as a CPC, um, the president of the State Department refer it to Congress, and then Congress has to do um, – some kind of a negotiation with uh, the country in terms of economic sanctions, diplomatic sanctions, of course. And a lot of countries have gotten off in the past with a waiver, such as Saudi Arabia. You know, we still give money to Saudi Arabia, even though, mm-hmm. you know, ch- there's not a single church in the country. And uh, Christians and Shias and other, you know, non-Sunni Muslims are uh, regularly uh, persecuted for their faith. But it seems to go along the same lines of... Um, lobbying by the country to, you know, get them off the special watch list. And uh, it's all around very concerning and um, inappropriate. Yeah, I want to talk about the special watch list, which is another designation uh, that the State Department can make. Um, It says that uh, you can designate each country that engaged in or tolerated severe violations of religious freedom during the previous year, but does not meet all the criteria for being designated as a country of particular concern. You can designate them to a special watch list. Nigeria is not even on that, Sarah. Exactly. So um, the important thing to remember is that 
this is released every year, and so we're not, you know, we're not going to stop the fight just because it's not on the list this year. The Christians are still facing a genocide. That there's no ifs, buts, or maybe that, that's happening. And people on the ground are telling us and showing us that there's systematic oppression. So whether it's not on a CPC list or the special watch list, our work continues to help these persecuted communities. And so it's important to remember that every year this changes. Uh, generation, uh, sorry administration to administration it changes and that's not going to stop us from doing the important work well sure but what is the i mean immediate consequence of this i mean you know i know that that idc on your take action page you you have um, a, a take action item about asking president biden to recognize a christian genocide in nigeria i mean if if the State Department is not recognizing Nigeria as a country of particular concern or not recognizing Nigeria to be on this special watch list, I mean, what will be the consequences if the U.S. doesn't doesn't express any official concern about what's happening in Nigeria? Um, the consequences are most uh, notably felt and most desperately felt by the Christian community of Nigeria. That's, um, that's a blanket statement that I think we need to acknowledge. But what happens now is that the Nigerian government is validated, like I said, for its actions. As I spoke last week on the show, I noted that the it's not only the militants and the terrorists that are persecuted Christians, uh, persecuting Christians. The Buhari government is not paying attention and turning a blind eye to these crimes. So it basically gives validation to the government of Nigeria that these crimes are okay to happen, which is not which is not going to last very long because we're going to continue working on this issue. But um, in the long term is that in the next couple months, we need to make sure that we have leaders in Congress that are raising this issue, talking to the State Department. Um, Secretary of State Lincoln was in Nigeria a few days ago, and he knows they know the issue. I think they are making a point in that they're saying that it's violence all around. We need to make the case that it's particular violence, systematic violence towards these communities. And so there's not much to say besides the fact that we're going to continue working on this issue and making sure that the CPC designation or at least a special watch list designation is ensured for next year. Um, Is it possible that the administration uh, still looks to Nigeria with concern in in that general sense that you were just talking about? I mean, there's no denying that there's violence happening there. Um, I mean, yeah. even if they don't recognize the religious nature of it, can things be done to address it? Exactly that. So um, they they cited the fact that it is uh, general violence. And so it's not a it's not a the issue is like, we'll take what we can get. That's not enough. You know, it's particular violence. But what the administration is looking to do, and of course, they haven't spoken too much about it, is to stabilize the country and then go from there. But at the end of the day, special recognition of this particular violence unlocks um, aid from the State Department and other United States entities. So we don't just want it to be, oh, there's violence. We need to help with humanitarian aid, with political stability. It's not enough because these um, communities are facing danger and uh, oppression in ways that need special attention to. And so it goes hand in hand. But at the end of the day, we need to just continue working with uh, um, members of Congress on getting that recognition. You know, there's tools in Congress that condemn these violence that we can utilize. There's obviously next year um, for the opportunity to be able to um designate this. We know that USERF is definitely not backing down from this issue and they're going to continue pressing and we appreciate, we always appreciate their work. Their leadership has done um, uh, very significant and effective work, including Nadine Mayenza, who's the chair of USERF. And a lot of these issues um, don't go away. And we hope that um, the administration, including President Biden and um, Secretary of State Blinken, um, do see the religious nature of this and uh, address it accordingly. This is a mistake that um, can be fixed. And we will be praying for that. And we know that you all at In Defense of Christians will remain on top of it with Congress particularly. Go to indefenseofchristians.org to find out more about the work that they do, perhaps support their work as we are in a time of giving now. We've been talking to Sarah Basile. Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely.